Hi, I'm going to review the simple star field and then one solution to challenge three random shapes. The simple star field will use the random function to randomly create where the stars are and what color, what colors they are. And we'll store the colors in an array. So let's do that. And here are the steps. Create an array of the star colors. So let's do that here. And an array, hopefully you remember from class, is a collection of objects. In this case, it's a collection of names of colors. And to create that, we'll say const, and then the name of the array, and a good name for an array of colors is colors. And then to create an array, you have these square brackets. And then at, uh, as usual, we have a semicolon at the end of the line. Now what goes inside the brackets? the elements of the array. So let's have yellow and white to start with. Notice that I have apostrophes around these strings, these words, and commas separate the values. Okay, the I need to change the background to black and move that call to the background function into the setup function because the setup function runs once and we only want to clear the canvas to black once. Otherwise, each time we draw a star, we would be erasing the previous star that was drawn. So let me do a select, cut, and paste, and then change this to either the word black or another way is just zero. So now I have the black background. So that's the first two steps. Now we want to randomly pick the X and Y coordinates and a color and draw a point. To draw a point, we use the point function and we say where the point is. And there are two numbers that appear here. The first is how far over from the left edge the point is. The second is how far down from the top. So let's say we wanted to go over 100 and down 200. So let's put that in. 100, 200. Then in order to see it on the black, we need to set the color. So that's the stroke color. And let's just go white for now. And here's the point. There's a point right there. It's 100 pixels from the left edge. And it's 200 pixels down from the top. Now, Let's make the position of the star random. Here's where we use the random function. We say random, we could say random 100, and the same thing for the y coordinate, random 100. But then when we run, all the stars would appear within 0 to 99 on x and 0 to 99 on y. Instead of that, we want to use the full width of the canvas and the height of the canvas. So that's why we'll say width here and height here. Now we fill the full canvas. Okay, the final thing is to choose the color randomly. And that's pretty easy to do too. We'll also use the random function for that. We say random and then the name of the array. And now the colors are random, uh, chosen from yellow and white. Let's throw maybe um, a red in there so you can see some different colors. Okay, so that's the simple star field. Now let's go on to challenge three random shapes, which as I say here, you can do by modifying what we started with here. Because this is making random points, it's not that difficult to change this into a program that makes random shapes. Um, so what are these shapes? Rectangles, ellipses, triangles, or lines? At the top of our class page, we have a reference, uh, a link to the P5JS reference. And if you're looking for things like um, how to make 2D shapes, here uh, is where these are described. Here's how you make a rectangle. 
you give the location of it and the dimensions of it. So x, y, width, height. And um, some of you wanted to make triangles. That's a little harder because triangles have three vertices. These corner things are called vertices. That's plural of vertex, V-E-R-T-E-X. Just making sure I spelled that right. Yes. Um, so you give x1, y1. So that could be this point. x2, y2. That could be this point. And the same for the third point. And a quadrilateral. Here's a quadrilateral. That takes four points. And an ellipse. The location and the width and height. The height is optional. If you don't specify the height, it'll be the same as the width, which makes it not only an ellipse, but a circle. All right, let's continue. Here's what we have. We've got these colors, and we are randomly choosing one, and then we're making a point. So we should be able to change this pretty quickly into an ellipse. So let's just change point to ellipse. And then you remember when we looked up ellipse, you have to also give it the, the dimensions, not just the position. So let's just make it, let's say, uh, 30. So now this program makes ellipses. And if I want to flatten them, I can make the height less than the width. And then I could also, if I don't like the, the fact that they're white on the inside and the stroke color on the outside, I can duplicate this line. See how quickly I can do that from the keyboard? And then do the same thing for um, fill. Now they'd be filled with a random color and stroked with a random color. Well, what if you want them filled and stroked with the same color? Okay, well, I'm glad I asked because this gives me another opportunity to show you how to use a variable. So what we're going to do is pull this part out. And I'm going to say const color equals that randomly chosen color. And then I'm going to use that variable here. And then I'm going to use it here. If we call random twice, we'll probably uh, get two different colors for the fill and the stroke. But if we call random once and save the result in this variable color, then we can stroke and fill with the same color. So that I like that better. Um, so this satisfies the challenge that's random shapes but we could make it we could go e even farther we could make the um, dimensions random too so what if we said that the that the width is the width is um, supposed to be random so what's the maximum size we'd want maybe i don't know 100 and then the height could be random with the maximum size of maybe 50. so now we have these that's sort of interesting what else could change about this? Well, we could add another random element. We could also add um, maybe a line, lines of various thickness. So how about we do this? We say stroke weight, we'll try five for the moment, and then we'll do line. And I could show you line in the reference, but um, I'll tell you that it takes four numbers, the x, y values for one end of the line and the x, y values for the other end of the line. So if I just said, say, 0, 0 to width minus 1, height minus 1, what would you expect to see? Well, you'd expect to see a line from 0, 0, which is here, all the way to this opposite corner. Let's see if we get that. There. So now we have a line that's always in the same place. The colors are kind of shifting. I think we need to add another color here. Or many more to make this look more interesting. Okay. Now let's make the stroke weight 
random. Random 20 maybe? Okay, and I think this, this will look more interesting when we move the line around. So how about we change all these things to be random values between zero and the uh, um, width and the height. So let's just modify what we have here. So this is the x-coordinate of one end of the line, and it, it is chosen randomly from a range of numbers between 0 and width minus 1. And this is the y-coordinate of that same end of the line, and it goes from 0 to height minus 1, and then something similar for the other end of the line. So now we have this. I wouldn't call it art, really, but still, it's good practice for learning to do computer programming. Choose one or more of the following randomly. Position, we've done that. Size and shape. Color, stroke, we did stroke and fill. And then the stroke weight for those lines. Okay, so I think that concludes one possible solution for challenge three, along with the going through the exercise of making the simple star field again.